Alright, welcome back to Pinball Wiz. I know my last upload was many years ago. I'll put it on the screen now. So, today, I'm going to be starting, hopefully, something uh, new on my channel, which is fixing stuff. And today, let's start with four broken GameCube games. So, I got this from eBay. I'll show the listing on the screen now. Came from all the way from California. And the guy had <laughs> a lot. Like, I ordered lot number 65. So, like, oh, he had 65 different lots of four broken GameCube games. Insane. Alright, so first game, Mario Party 4, Godzilla, Animal Crossing, and Pikmin. Now, something I noticed later, which uh, the, the viewers with keen eyes might have noticed already, is that Pikmin, at the very bottom, right there, it says POW. Which means this will not work on North American GameCubes. So, I may have made a mistake in buying this lot, but, yeah, Hopefully, Mario Party 7 will make up for that. Or Animal Crossing, or Godzilla. Alright, so initial inspections are Animal Crossing looks fixable. Godzilla, uh... I don't really see much wrong with this, so I guess we'll see in testing. But that, so I guess it also looks fixable. Mario Party 7 has one somewhat pretty bad scratch. Can't really see it. I'll show a picture of it. And then Pikmin looks... Well, it's fine, but just, I, I can't do sh sh anything with it. So that one is just going to remain there. Alright, so let's start with initial testing. Alright, so here is the testing apparatus. I got my GameCube, and I got my big old TV. Alright, let's start initial testing with Animal Crossing. Uh, attempt number one. Find the power switch. There we go. Okay. Well, I guess that's not surprising. Attempt two. Yeah, alright, that one's going to need uh, some polishing. Alright. Godzilla, attempt one. Oh. Okay, this is actually making it farther than my other copy, which is completely broken. Um, let me get a controller and see if it fails. I'll catch you up if it fails. Oh, I think it just... <laughs> Alright, well, you're all caught up. It failed. <laughs> Let's try that again. I pressed the reset button. And then died. Okay. That's fine. That actually gives me hope, though. <laughs> Alright. Mario Party 7, Attempt 1. This one, this one's going to be hard to get working, but we'll see. Well, that's assuming it's broken anyway. Yeah, go figure. Right, that one I'm not even going to try again. But just for shits and giggles, let's do Pikmin. Alright. Honestly, I'm kind of curious what happens. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Not much. Not much at all. Alright. So what I was talking about, here's my other copy of Godzilla. For those of you that for some reason think I might be lying, here's two copies of Godzilla. And uh, I think it was this one, I don't even remember. Yeah, this one. It's crap. Uh, somehow the code I think got warped or something. So I'll show you what it looks like. But it ain't pretty.
yeah, that's <laughs> that's pretty pretty normal. All right, so now now I'm going to teach you how on earth I'm going to fix these. Let's start off with Animal Crossing. All right, so what you're going to need is you're going to need a piece of 2,000 grit sandpaper, 3,000 grit sandpaper, and maybe 5,000 is really up to you, and a little tiny cup of water. So what you're going to want to do is take your game, flip it over, wet the 2,000 piece of grit sandpaper in the cup of water, then you're going to do really the unthinkable, but it's what you're supposed to do. All right, so you're going to... It, in my case, the sandpaper, the 2,000 grit is really flat, so I like to reinforce it with 3,000 grit, which is foamy. And what you're going to do is you're just going to rub. It. You're going to rub it in circles around the disc. And what that does is that it's going to evenly sand the disc and hopefully sand it back down to a level where it can... the scratch basically is gone, because you're sanding away at the scratch very fine until finally the scratch is actually gone. And the GameCube is able to read it. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to do this for about five minutes. And then when you're done with that, take 3,000 grit that you're using to reinforce it and just go the game, same thing all over again with 3,000 grit. And then, like I said, if you want, you can do 5,000 grit. It's not really necessary in my opinion. But it just sort of makes the disc a little bit shinier when you're done. Sometimes, like, a little bit of scratch marks left over with 3,000. And 5,000 will just get rid of those. But it's really not that big of a deal. I'm going to keep scratching, and I'll get back to you when I'm done. Alright, I'm back. And so, I took Animal Crossing. Went 2,000 grit for 5 minutes. 3,000 grit for 5 minutes. And so now you're left with a disc that is a little wet, because you're assuming you kept up with the water, because you're supposed to do that probably every... like every minute or two minutes, because it's going to get dry again. So you're left with this that is slightly wet and gross looking, and so in order to fix that, to make it dry, because next step you're going to want to dry, you just get a napkin that's really nice and soft, and just, just dry it. Give it a nice drying. Once you got a disc that looks pretty garbage, because <laughs> you just sanded the crap out of it, can't see it that well on camera, but uh, here's Godzilla right next to it. You can probably see there's a little bit of difference in shine. That's because this this has not been scratched and this has been scratched. Alright, so then this is the most important step really is the polishing step. You did the sanding down, so you got it down nice and smooth, nice and flat. If you feel it with your finger, it should be nice and smooth. Real smooth. Then what you're gonna do is get a polishing wheel. So in my instance, I happen to have a um a motorized one, which is really nice, that my dad has. And I just use that uh, and just pause the side. Now I'll show you. Alright. So I've taken you off the tripod. Alright, so we're not going to use him. <laughs> he's too big. We're going to use the little guy over here. This little Ryobi, uh, I think he's a quarter of a horsepower, which is so, so little, but it's exactly what we need. We're going to want this side, not this side, because this has little metal fragments, and that will hurt you and the disc. This one right here, the nice soft one. Turn him on, go really fast, light. Alright, basically, what we're going to do is that we're going to take our Animal Crossing disc right here and just keep rubbing him around, going circles, going circles, kind of like, you know, something like this. And then just rotate the disc. Keep, keep. Can't show you great right here, but I'll get the camera back on the tripod and I'll meet you back. Alright, I'm back. Camera's on the tripod, so no unsteady camera angles, even though this has image stabilization. Alright, so take the disc. Looks, looks like garbage. And it's kind of hard to explain, so I guess I'll just try and show it to you. Alright, got it hopefully nice and zoomed in. Alright, so, so here's what I'm going to do. Turn it on, and you won't be able to hear me, so just sort of you know, look at what I do.
And that's the basics of disc polishing. Let's return to the GameCube and see if it worked. Alright, we're back. I have Animal Crossing, so let's hope for the best. It's and turning on now. Uh-oh. <laughs> Alright, let me give the disc a quick inspection and I'll get back to you. Oh! Oh, did you see that? It got farther. All I really did there in that case, I didn't polish it again again. I mean, this still kind of yuck. All I actually did in order to get it go from back to the error to this error, I just gave the disc a nice little hand polish per se, and this happened. That's a shame. I don't actually have a working copy of Animal Cross, and I still don't. Um, yeah, that's that sucks. Hopefully, Godzilla <laughs> will have better luck simply because we know it kind of already works. That's really huge. Let's try Godzilla again. I, uh, I removed a little bit of dirt that was on it, so now it actually looks really good. Alright. I have no idea. Um, that's weird. <laughs> there is scratches on the disc. But, um... Thankfully, as I'm looking at it, I don't see any warpage. Okay, so here's what I do. Like I said, I use the lights above me, which you can kind of see there. You can see how it's still pretty straight, right? At the very edge down there. That's good. You, you don't want a warpy light. And as long as it stays straight throughout the entire disc, wherever you move it, and you can kind of see warps at the edge, but that's okay because it's it's like the very edge versus the other one was a little bit before the edge. Um, yeah, this actually looks like it's... Uh, I call it the continuity test. Though, that's a term I made up and it doesn't actually make any sense. And a little... So, okay, another thing that can happen is a little side can peel off. That will happen if you repolish re this sometimes. Um, so far... I haven't had any issues with it. I had a copy of Strikers that did that, and Pokemon XD. Both of them still work, though they do have minor issues, but compared to how I got them, <laughs> they're way better. But yeah, you can just sort of leave it, or just like kind of pick it off. It's up to you. It doesn't really affect anything, though sometimes if you leave it on and the game keeps spins, you might hear a little flap, 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 somewhere like that. Alright, so let's polish this one up. And see how it goes. Hopefully better than Animal Crossing. Alright. Godzilla. Alright, so one thing I want to clarify. That I was talking about the little flappy bit right here. I didn't do that. Uh, oh, it fell off. <laughs> um, so basically, the person before me that I bought this from on eBay, they resurfaced it. That, that's also why there's white dust in here before. So, I did. this is actually my first time genuinely resurfacing it. So let's hope it actually works. Let's try. No! No! Okay, let me just open and close the lid again. Uh. Alright, if you're curious, if it says... An error occurred. Yeah, you're you're bad. You're in a bad spot. <laughs> but if it says a disc, the disc could not be read, or something like that. Basically, anything besides an error, you can open and close the lid, and it will try again. However, if you get an error, you gotta turn the GameCube off and turn it back on. <laughs> All right. Attempt number. Two with uh, uh, resurfacing attempt two, and this is like my sixth or seventh attempt. 
actually trying it. Alright, wish me the best. Oh, holy moly. Okay. Oh my god. I've never been happier to see an Atari logo. Oh my god. Oh, wait a minute. Is this actually working? Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, what's it loaded? Mega Pandora version. Alright, I pressed start, that was me. <laughs> Oh, there's an adventure. Uh, let's do adventure. Oh, uh, this is it. Adventure mode. We got one. We got one. Oh, and if you're curious, I um, I took my GameCube lid off. <laughs> Whoops. And, um, see? Lid. What I've been doing is that I've been fooling it into thinking that the lid was closed by using my finger. And so by doing that, I can see where exactly the laser is trying to read the disc. So I can see where the problem is at. While that's not insanely helpful, because you can't, you know, specifically polish that one spot, or else you'll create problems. It's still nice to know, because <laughs> if it's, like, on the outside, then you know it's because of that warpage, if it has any. But if it's, like, on the inside, then you know it's, like, a scratch, probably. Because usually there's not much warpage on the inside. At least, well, there's, there's sometimes warpage on the main silver part, but the disc doesn't read that, so it doesn't matter. But I'm happy with that. Alright. Still saddened about <laughs> Animal Crossing. All right, let's try some Mario Pooper Seven. Um, yeah, that's that looks bad. All right, I'm back. All right, so here, mm, let's see where did it go? Right there. All right, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. All right, you kind of can. Ooh, it does have a little bit of warp. It's too lovely. Um, see a little bit of thing right in front of my fingernail. Right there, where the edge of the light is. That's a problem. And that might be this disc's problem. I gotta stop driving this. Um, by the way, I did not add any, add any scratches. I fell on carpet. Um, yeah, that might be a huge problem. We'll see. I'll get back to you. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> Attempt number... I don't know. Someone will say or not. Uh, or it'll be on screen somewhere. Uh, 
I don't know even why I'm still attempting this. I guess probably because I see one tiny scratch, but I just gotta try. Plus, I, you know, I spent about 50 bucks. Uh, Alright, attempt one. Oh, no. Oh, that's so sad. Attempt two. Alright, if you're curious why it gave me the blue thing twice and then the other red thing, that is actually simple to answer. It's not what you'd think, though. So, the GameCube, I guess you could say, has a starting boost, where if it's been off for a while, because I spent, you know, 12 minutes polishing this, just about, um, whenever you first turn it back on, it, I give it, like, a, a starting boost. But then it slowly, like the laser just is somehow for some reason stronger for that little bit. And then as you use it more, it gets weaker and weaker. And I mean like every time we turn it off and on and wait, you know, like 10 minutes or so. So that's why it's happening there. So yeah, this disc is uh, pretty bad because uh, it's just not working. That's a shame. Did some more testing on Godzilla. I haven't found any problems yet. Yay. But, you know, this is only like a $20 game. So I didn't make quite all my money back. Yeah, Godzilla works. Alright, I think I'm going to end the video here. Didn't quite go the way I wanted it to, but um, at least we had one. I'll take it for the video at least. <laughs> I actually did order another lot from them. This is the case for it. It's lot number 48. Came with Metroid Prime. And there's another one under sheer. No, there is not. Ah. It came with Metroid Prime, Strikers. Ah. Not this copy of Strikers. This, this is my custom edition copy of Strikers. I have the manual but no case. And disc. This game, um, but not this exact one. Mario Party 7 and Lost Kingdoms. That I actually got working, Lost Kingdoms. Mario Party 7 and all the other ones. I couldn't, so that sucked. Alright, lesson learned. Don't pay 50 bucks for 40 games. Or for four games. Except for once. Um, paid 40 bucks. 40 bucks free shipping. For Pokemon XD, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mario Party 7, <laughs> and uh, also a copy of Godzilla. That's where I got the other one from. I actually got Pokemon XD working, so he's in my he's in my good case. And so did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I got that one working. And as some of you know, Pokemon XD as of right now is a pretty expensive game. <laughs> so I'm I'm pretty thrilled with that. <laughs> And then here's Lost Kingdoms from the other batch, from this same seller that had this copy, and that I just did today. I got this one working, so he's in a good case, too. <sighs> kind of disappointing, but uh, how it goes, at least I got one going. And uh, I just want to say thank you all for watching. Bye!